All right. So Julian suffered an acute myocardial infarction and is now entering cardiac rehabilitation phase two. All right. Before starting phase two, the patient had a positive symptom limited exercise tolerance test, ETT. All right. The therapist would like to incorporate aerobic training into the patient's exercise regimen without overstressing the heart. So when comparing upper and lower body exercise at a given workload, which of the following findings is the most likely to be found? All right, so we have A, we have a higher cardiac output when using the upper body ergometer. B is a higher cardiac output when using the lower body ergometer. All right. C is a lower rate pressure product when using the upper body ergometer. And then we have D, which is a higher chance of encountering a recurrent acute myocardial infarction when using the upper body ergometer. All right. So quite a bit to go through. Quite a bit. Does anybody want to change their their answer last minute? Anybody want to change their answer? Great to see you, Carolina. Cassie. Great to see you, AB, as well. All right. So if anybody wants to change your answer, go ahead. Go ahead, change it real quick before we dive into this because we are about to kill it right now. All right, and there's a little twist at the end I'm going to talk to you about. All right, so here it is. So we have Julian suffered this acute myocardial infarction. Okay, we understand heart damage typically due to some type of ischemia to the heart tissue. Okay, cool. We got that. And is now entering cardiac rehab phase two. All right, we know there's this phase uh, three phases with this. Um, typically the person starts off at the hospital. Now this person is leading into outpatient. That's phase two. All right. So it says before starting phase two, though, the patient had a positive symptom limited exercise tolerance test. Now, this is really important for every single one of you all to understand what's really happening here and what this means. If your patient can either have a positive or they can have a negative symptom limited exercise tolerance test. We're usually having this done. Our patients are doing this exercise tolerance test before phase two in order to to give us like an exercise prescription, pretty much a level that we can work in, exercise intensity that we can work in without risking another myocardial infarction. So we can get a nice exercise prescription based on this. All right. So the fact that it's positive lets us know that this patient was experiencing some type of ischemia during that exercise tolerance test, all right, where they they may have had to terminate it, whatever the case may be, the test is positive because the physician found some ischemia related to to the exercise that they were doing on on the treadmill or whatever, however they were doing the ETT, okay? So we know that ischemia is present. Okay, cool. So as we continue down the line, it says that the therapist would like to incorporate aerobic training into the patient's exercise regimen without overstressing the heart. Cool. All right. No extra-ness there. That's pretty straightforward. Now we lead into what we call the question stem where it says when comparing upper and lower body exercise at a given workload, which of the following findings is the most likely to be found? All right. So when comparing upper body and lower body exercise at a given workload, which of the following findings are we going to find? So in order for you to understand this, in order for you to apply what you know and and get this question right with confidence, you have to have a good understanding of, so what's the relationship between upper body and lower body exercise when it comes to stress on the heart? What's the difference? Does lower body cause more stress on the heart than upper body exercise at a given workload? All right. Did y'all see that? (laughs) Given workload. That is really the question that we're trying to answer. All right. And so let me make this a little bit clear before we dissect the answer choices. Hold on. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It says that when comparing upper body and lower body exercise at a given workload. So that's kind of like you doing an upper body resistance. Right. And and let's say it's on an upper body bike. Right. What they call the UBE. And setting the resistance level at five. And then, right, having the patient do just lower body exercise and still setting the resistance level at five. So you're doing the same workload for the upper and lower body, right? And we're trying to determine, well, which one is going to have the most stress on the heart? That's what we're looking for. All right? That's the question. So let's take a look at it. 
first things first. It says a higher cardiac output when using the upper body ergometer. All right, so before we really dive into this, we got to understand what is this cardiac output? What are you talking about? All right, so cardiac output equals what, people? What does it equal? Talk to me. Heart rate times stroke volume. Really, it's the amount of blood that the heart pumps out in a minute is really what we're talking about. That's cardiac output. And so it's saying there's a higher cardiac output for the upper body ergometer. True or not true? That's the question. Well, here's the deal. I would actually say that, that, that that's true. That that's true. Because I know that, you know, when it comes to exercise at a given workload, right, the upper body has smaller muscles, right? The upper body has smaller muscles. And the lower body has bigger muscles, larger muscles, right? And so at a given workload, the lower body muscles are going to have to do less work than the upper body because the upper body's smaller, right? Smaller muscles. And so in order to keep up with what the lower body would do, the upper body has to work exceptionally hard. It has to work double the effort in order to match what the lower body's doing. Why? The muscles are, just aren't big enough, right? They're not as big as the lower body. And so to be honest with you, the upper body is going to start calling for way more oxygen, way more support from the heart because they're doing more work, all right? They're having to put out more stress, more energy in order to complete the same amount of resistance. And so how does the heart feed those muscles more oxygen? By increasing the heart rate, by increasing the stroke volume, thereby increasing the cardiac output. Now, for the same resistance level for the lower extremities, say that both of them, upper extremities and lower extremities, were both at a resistance level of five, and you're going, the lower body has to do less work because they're bigger muscles. They're not going to call for as much oxygen. And so the cardiac output would actually be lower. All right, and so I like the answer of A. I think the answer A fits the bill. Now, whether it's the right answer or not, or the best answer, well, we have to figure it out because it says, which of the following findings is the most likely to be found? We need to continue on down the line. So B says a higher cardiac output when using the lower body ergometer. Well, we just spoke about that, right? I would say that the cardiac output is definitely, all right, the, the cardiac output is going to be, I should say, much higher for the upper body than it would be for the lower body. And so B is not going to be true. It shouldn't be higher, all right, using the lower body ergometer. It should not be higher there. And so that just doesn't make a lot of sense. We can eliminate B. A is definitely more correct, all right, than B is. Let's look at C. C says a lower rate pressure product when using the upper body ergometer. Okay, so this question is really challenging you right now because not only do you have to know cardiac output, now you have to know what the rate pressure product is, which is also known as RPP, rate pressure product. All right, and then we have to know, well, what makes up the rate pressure product? How do I get that? All right, rate pressure product is going to be systolic blood pressure, and that's gonna be times the heart rate. All right. Systolic blood pressure times the heart rate. Okay, so here's the deal. When the upper body is working, right, and, and, and it's pumping out this, this workload, it will have a higher heart rate, will it not? We already spoke about that because we said the cardiac output was going to be higher, right? Did we not already speak about that? Cardiac output is going to be higher. Both of these are going to go up, stroke volume heart rate. So we know the heart rate is automatically going up. That's going to be higher. Right. That just makes sense. Also, the systolic blood pressure will be higher. At a given workload for the upper body ergometer, again, those muscles are a lot smaller. They have to do more work. It's going to stress the heart more, and it's also going to increase peripheral resistance. It's going to increase the, the level of peripheral resistance. So both of those numbers are going to be high. So C is not correct. It's actually opposite of what I would expect. I would expect that to be a higher rate pressure product when using the lower, uh, upper body ergometer. A higher. All right. So the, the A and C 
should be saying about the same thing, but they're not. All right, this should be higher here, but it's lower. And so we can get rid of C. Rate pressure product should be higher. Cardiac output should be higher. Let's look at D. D says a higher chance. Oh, this is what I love, baby. This is what I love right here. Oh, a higher chance of encountering a recurrent acute myocardial infarction, a higher chance of getting that when using the upper body ergometer. True or not true. Wow. This is a good one. All right. Here's the deal. I believe this to also be true. I believe this to be true. Because, you know, if you're using the upper body ergometer, and I'm telling you that, you know, the upper body ergometer increases the level of stress on the heart at a given workload when comparison to the lower body. All right. Um, uh, that means that it, since I'm increasing the level of stress on the heart, there's a higher chance that. I'm going to run into a recurrent myocardial infarction because I'm stressing the heart more. So I would say, yeah, there's a higher chance of, of doing that at a given workload. Right? And so this is a true answer. Now, here's the deal. What does the question ask you for? The question says, when comparing upper and lower body exercise at a given workload, which of the following findings is the most likely to be found? The higher chance of uh, encountering a recurrent MI is not a finding, all right? Maybe that's something that you read. Maybe that's something that came out in research, but that's not a finding of yours. A finding of yours would have been the increased heart rate, the increased cardiac output, the increased uh, rate pressure product because we calculate the systolic blood pressure. We calculate the heart rate. Those are findings, but not the higher rate. So D does not answer the question, even though it's true. It does not answer the question. All right. And so there's, there's a little, little, little thing I want to talk to you all about. Hold on. Stay tuned now. Stay tuned now. Here's the deal. I want to clear something up because some of you might feel a little confused because it's like, well, the lower body has such bigger muscles. What? I just don't understand how the upper body would be stressing the heart even more. I just don't get that when the muscles are smaller. Here's the deal. If I told you that the resistance level for the lower body ergometer was at a level 15 and then the upper body ergometer was just at a level five, yes, the lower body would. The lower body definitely would be stressing the heart more. But we're saying at a given workload when they're doing the, they're trying to reach the same resistance level, the upper body has to work a lot harder than the lower body. And that stresses the heart more. That's it. All right. That's what we're saying. So what, where did it really come down to? It came down to you watching this sentence right here when comparing the upper body and lower body exercise at a given workload. That's super important. Let me talk to you all about something real quick. I'm seeing some loves. Appreciate you, Marley. I see you, girl. I see you. Ooh, man, I know you crushed this one. You, Dean, I saw y'all, baby crushing this question listen there's an extra piece that i want y'all to know about i'm gonna give you all a little pointer spoke to you about this a few weeks ago that on exams like the mpte the tester uses a strategy where they add in an answer choice not to trick you but to add in an answer choice that is going to uh, attract you so to speak draw you in because I've already told you that this person's had an acute MI. And in my answer choice, I use acute MI. Do you see that? And so your brain does some really tricky stuff, really cool stuff. It latches on to recognition, things that it's seen before. You start to feel like, ooh, something about D, I just like it. Something about D makes me want to pick it. I don't know why. And it's the fact that I biased you by having acute MI in the answer choice and in the question. So you see both of them and you're like, ooh, something about D. I just gotta choose it. And you select D and even though it is true, it is wrong. 